Over 100 games played for Payne. Trying to send her out with another tournament victory. Here's Shamaria Bridges, and the Bucks have their second lead of the game. Bridges picking up where she left off, and that's putting the ball on the floor and getting closer range shots. We know she's a great three-point shooter, and Furman's defending for that, so she has opportunity to create some space. Holly Wilkins easily gets to the rim. 12 points now for Wilkins. Continuing to add to her tally, about 1,500 career points, fifth best in a Furman uniform. Raven Dean wants it on the inside. She's got Whitney Bunn matched up on her. Instead, on the attack, Sure somehow, without a good angle, puts it home. Uh, sure putting that high on the glass. And there wasn't a whole lot of space for her and actually driving into the traffic, but using Raven Dean as a bit of an interior screen to get that shot off. Here's Ellis now. She used a screen to get free but lost the ball. It was a kick ball. So they'll reset the sock, uh, shot clock, add a second to it. Here on the drive, see it's initially taken away, and then the little kick. Chandler Christopher's getting a hand in there. She's been fairly quiet on the offensive end, but has really done a nice job defensively of being a presence, doing some of the intangible things for ETSU. Both teams have come out running some effective offensive sets in the early stages of this half. Here's Christopher. Not a lot of offense yet this half. It won't come there. Whitney Bunn will push. She'll go right at Tartar, and it's an offensive foul again with Tartar starting to get back onto her heels. It's the second charge against Bunn today. Wow, and that one, Jackie Carson taking exception to Felt like perhaps that might have been a quick whistle on it. You can see where Tartar is maintaining her position. She is sliding some to the right, but her verticality maintains that space. That's a tough call. I, I might have to agree with Jackie Carson on it. Jackie Carson certainly didn't like the call. Whoa, quick move there for Tartar, but she doesn't have the finish. So that's now the second foul on Bond. Both of them offensive. Nice pass. Duncan, count it. Wilkins on the back end. That was a great offensive execution. And that's Dawn setting that up. The all-freshman player drives into the paint, stops up, and Jalen Christopher, frankly, got caught sleeping as Holly Wilkins gives her a little shoulder fake out and then the back door cut. Holly Wilkins' dad was a great athlete himself. I already told you Raven Dean's dad, Moosin Muhammad. Wilkins' dad, Gerald. 13-year NBA career and also played with the Southern Conference team. He was with Chattanooga. And her uncle wasn't bad either. Nope. <laughs> uh, Mr. Dominique Wilkins. Bridges with the pull-up. Four points in this half now. As the teams are going back and forth, this goes back to about the two-minute mark in the first half. Oh, we knew we would see a much tighter ball game in our second game, four versus five. It's always a battle, and this one not disappointing whatsoever. Tartar, Bun was late, closing out. And the lead is the largest it's been all day for the Bucks, who at one point trailed by 13. Jackie Carson slowing the team down, getting her offense set. As I mentioned before, I feel like this Furman team is much better when they can execute in the half court instead of getting into a running game. Carter gazes down at the line, but that's off the mark. The Paladins have missed seven straight threes after they hit their first five. Tartar bumped from behind by Sierra Carter. And Whitney Bond in the mix again, trying to avoid picking up yet another foul and does effectively. Sierra Carter coming in from behind. You can see Tiana Tartar on the push. This is where she is very good in the open court. Getting the foot speed, getting down the floor. Now Bridges really starting to feel it. They've ruled it a deep two for Bridges, who has the last five points of the game herself. Well, we saw that kind of scoring out of Whitney Bunn early. She has since gone cold and 
been the guard play for ETSU that has been the difference. Carter with an up and under around Dean. Watching him go back and forth, it should come as no surprise. They split the regular season series. They're separated by just a game in the standings. The Bucks at eight and six, the Paladins seven and seven. Vaughn bumps her way off of Wilkins. Dean crashes hard for the offensive glass, but gave it to Wilkins. Wilkins continuing to be in the mix on the defensive end. And there's Vaughn when she gets a lead. She's pretty darn good. Gets him within one. You don't see Bun with a head of steam like that attacking the rim so often. Uh, but she can, she can turn on the turbo when she needs to. And it's just that she's so selective as a player. She likes the long range shots. And so <laughs> does Tiana Tartar. Another three for the Bucks. That's their sixth of the day. So as Furman got hot early and cooled down, now it's the Bucks that are getting hot late. ETSU is 13-1 and one when they score 60 or more points. Their one loss was to Furman. Bun's got the answer. That one game was 81-77. This game has all the makings of a high-scoring game right now. Absolutely. It's become a shootout as this quarter has wound through. And it's been all guard play in my mind, in terms of Tierra Tartar, Whitney Bond, and Shamaria Bridges. Tartar steps into Holly Wilkins. Caitlin Duncan, nice on the box out. Ellis, and, and now back-to-back -back threes for the Paladins. And they, they needed that lift. That puts Furman back on top. And the two three-pointers. Ellis just quietly getting the job done. The senior, one of the Two seniors on this team. I tell you, she was 50% from the arc over the last four games and continuing to shoot long, well long range. Both of these teams are red hot here in the third quarter. Four seconds on the shot clock. Dean works into a crowd. Vaughn has to create. It's a shot clock violation. 